okay, this is a reaction video. Now I hope full, hope I'm hopeful to make it to France sometime next year. And if I do, which would be fantastic, so we got another from Walter's World. Please click like, share, and subscribe for him. And like, share, and subscribe for me. Is France safe to visit? Safety advice for France. Well, let's find out because I'm kind of curious about this one. Hey there, fellow travelers. Mark here with Walter's World, and today we're in Strasbourg, France, and today we're going to talk about safety advice for visiting France. And this video isn't about scaring people out of coming to France. It's about getting people ready to enjoy France and so you have an idea of what to expect, because I'll be honest, we've come to France dozens of times. I've been here with my kids when they were babies. I've been here when they're teenagers. I've been with my parents when I'm here, and we have felt safe, and we've felt wonderful every time we've come. So I've never really had any of these problems, but I have seen some of these issues, so I want to make sure you're ready as a tourist just in case some of these things and actually i'm i'm, I'm kind of curious about this like hopefully ne next year this is 20, 2022 when i'm doing this video uh i'm hopeful what the goal is is with a friend of mine we want to make it to paris but we also want to go up to normandy and see uh, utah and omaha beaches uh but let's find out things happen because remember the magic fanny pack does not protect you when you're traveling so you got to use your head and i think one of the things and actually there's probably two of the most worrisome things we have to worry about in terms of safety kind of stuff when you're here in terms of robbings or whatever is scams and pickpockets look in general the scams and pickpockets are, are Paris is where you're going to have the biggest issues with that, but also in some of the bigger cities. But if you're walking around places like Strasbourg or, or Nancy or, or, or Bordeaux. And that would be a problem anywhere you go to a lot, to some extent. You'd have to worry about that if you were in New York City or Chicago, even in Columbus, Ohio, where I'm at. Uh, but not so much the scam. Well, the scams, yeah, but the uh, scams generally that you run into in the United States are like over the Internet. You don't have, I don't know how much you have on the, as far as street scams, but um, yeah. The chance you're going to get scammed, the chance you're going to get pickpocket drops enormously, but it's not zero. Okay, so anytime you're going around where there's lots of tourists, whether it's the Louvre or on a pedestrian street, make sure you keep your eye open and your wallet in your front pocket and you'll be okay. Okay, so that's one thing I want to make sure you realize. Now in terms of scams, we have a plenty of videos on scams of France. We've got videos on, you know, the scams of Paris. Some of the ones you really need to kind of think about are the petition scam where someone's trying to get you to sign a petition. Don't do that. They might be kind of checking you out to see what you have. Anytime anybody gives you anything, they're, even if they say it's for free, they're going to want a donation and they might cause some trouble and they'll put it on your kid, like put give them a rose or tie something on them. Just stay away from that. That. Also, if anybody is like, oh, I found this gold ring, is it yours? No. no. Yeah, I mean, a lot of what he's saying here is generally common sense kind of things. Uh, nothing is free. Don't expect it to be free and, and so forth. No, it's not. It's not. I'm too fat to wear my wedding ring, so that's not going to fit me. Thank you. So there's those kind of scams and pickpocket things, just like you have anywhere you go in the world. But that's something you need to be aware of when you're here. Now, if we think about other things that tourists don't always think about when they travel, when you're coming here to France, you have to realize this, it has really wonderful weather. And yes, if you're on the, the Côte d'Azur, the French Riviera, obviously sunburn is a real thing. So wear your sunblock. But not just there. If you're going to be hiking in the Alps, you're going to be hiking around places, you need to cover up in the summer because you can get burned that way. And when you're enjoying beautiful cities like Strasbourg, I mean, that sun is coming down and you don't always have the protection. Again, these are, these are right now, these are common sense kind of things that you need to be wary of when you go anywhere you go. This isn't just unique to France, the pickpockets and scams and the uh, wearing sun, sun, sunscreen protect yourself. I have sunscreen I carry with me all the time. And I used it when I was in September. Look, September in uh, Colorado or Wyoming or in Utah, or not Utah, um, Montana or South Dakota, it can get cold there. But that, that doesn't mean there's no sun coming on. In fact, I went to a, an NFL game in November and where my sister and brother-in-law had their seats, we were there uh, the sun beats down on you. And even in that kind, it's, it's not a bad idea to have sunscreen. So this, these are common sense things, but, but certainly well points well taken. You want to make sure you protect yourself from the sun. Also, stay hydrated and not just wine, because that's where tourists sometimes get in trouble. It's because they're not keeping up with their water intake. And don't worry, you can drink the water here, no problem. So make sure whenever you go to a restaurant, ask for the... You know, when I was in Germany and you ask for water, they always bring you the sparkling water. And I didn't, again, I, I, th that is just what they brought you. And it was fine. I, I don't, didn't mind the sparkling water, but I just preferred regular plain water. I'd have to go, I'd have to go to, to, to other stores and buy, uh, you know, look, so I, you know, cause, cause they, they would just naturally bring you the, the, the sparkling water. 
Just get the just get the tap water and drink it up to keep yourself hydrated and safe to keep you, you know, away from those sun effects, okay? Because that's actually one thing I've seen a number of tourists have issues with this kind of sunstroke, all right? So be aware of that. Now, in terms of food, the food is fantastic here, so you're not going to have any problems. However, if you do have allergies, make sure you can go online and get your allergies explained in French, laminate those, then show them to the waiter, okay? Even if the waiter speaks English, it's good just to have the French version to show them this is what I have, because a lot of times Sometimes what will happen is they have kind of a, a set menu and so the stuff's already prepared so it might not be possible to make your allergy free version of that food on every meal so they might be able to tell you look we can't change it on this but we could change it on that so that would be one thing I'd say for those that have you know anaphylactic issues. So you can dream more today and worry less about tomorrow and they can too. Introducing the Book of Things to Do from Highlights with more than 530 stuff does look really good. Now, the next safety thing is something that I have I have felt many times here in France. And here we have these nice pavers, but when you're walking around France, there is a lot of cobblestones and not all the cobblestone streets and sidewalks wear correct kind of shoes are kept up very well so you could turn an ankle or two i know we were in rl and i had liam on my shoulders and i actually have a picture joss was about to take a picture while we're walking and i tripped over a hole and just went down and liam was like i don't know he's like two at the time and so i reached out my arms to catch him like this and it went full like like superman -y, right and i just went smash to the ground liam was totally fine Myself, oh, my whole leg was bruised up. I had the microphone for my camera in my pocket. It got flattened just because the cobblestones, you do need to be careful. So have good shoes for walking on the cobblestones. And remember, when the cobblestones get wet, they get really slick. So make sure you have shoes that can have a good grip. Yeah, be wary of that. I, I saw those, some of those in Germany, not a lot, but some of them in Germany. And uh, I wore the correct kind of shoes just to be safe when you are here. Also, with all the walking you're gonna do here, you gotta think about the shoes you're gonna wear. Okay, so have the right shoes because, you know, calf strains, I guess, are, are just getting Charlie horses and, and cramps can't happen. I'll see tourists that are just rubbing their legs every day after they're here visiting France, because you're gonna walk around and take in these beautiful cities. So far, so good. I like what I'm looking at. They're just showing France. He's not showing Paris. I, hopefully, I wanna spend some time in Paris. Now, another area we need to talk about when it comes to safety is public transportation. And I will say, if you're going to be taking the TGVs, the fast trains, there's not really too many issues there. I would recommend always keeping an eye on your bags, um, especially even if, well, if you're not on the TGVs, you're in the local trains, always keep your bags with you or near you. I'm not saying the French people are going to steal any of your stuff, but it has been known that people might accidentally walk off with the wrong bag. So you want to keep your eyes on your stuff. I know for me, when I used to take the night trains here back in the day when those were a thing, like I would have to stay up at night because people would hop on the train and just look and see who was sleeping and phew, take a bag. Now, that's a long time ago. Don't have to worry about that anymore, but it's still good to be aware of where your bags are on the train at all time. Also, another safety thing is actually one thing you should do if you're going to be taking the trains here, make sure you practice with your luggage. Can you lift it up and put it up above the seats? Because one of the things you have to realize is, one, there's not a lot of space above the seats on the trains here, so you got to pack light. But also, if it's really heavy, you could hurt yourself. I've seen people like throw out their bags, lifting up their suitcases in the trains. So just be lightly packed when you come here for your back's health because it can be an issue. And the people aren't going to help you put it up there if it weighs, you know, 50 kilos. No, no, no one's going to feel sorry for you. And you're like, I don't know what to do with my bag. Also, if people offer to help you, like at the train stations with your bags, be extra cautious with it. I would say do it yourself. Yeah, I mean, look, I, uh, that, that's something that I, we, we had help when we were in Germany, not with the bags, but getting around the place. But uh, just because somebody helps you doesn't mean they're necessarily want to help you. It's, a, it's an opportunity to, to scam. And I don't want to, anybody to think that's what you, you should normally think about. Like if you see something like that, go, oh, my God, somebody's trying to steal something from me. No. Uh, just, just be wary of where you are and what you're doing.
help, but some people, they get help from others. Just, just be aware of it. If you're going to get help, make sure it's a registered person that works for the SNCF, the train lines. They can help you, but just be aware of that. Um, other things I would say in terms of transportation, public transportation, in terms of the buses and metros, that's another place you really need to pay attention. You know, in Paris, the metro and buses are usually pretty okay, but in the evening time, you do need to be aware of your situation and pay attention to what's going on. It's not unheard of of people getting pickpocketed on the trains or the buses, you know, in some of the bigger cities. One thing I would say is make sure you're paying attention when you're getting in the bus and off of the bus or into the metros or out of the metros or into the regional trains or out of the regional trains. Or I'll tell you, when I, like, when I was over there and when, when I, in, in any other place other than not just in, in uh, uh, Europe, in, if I'm in Chicago, if I'm in New York, if I'm in Los Angeles, like that, I'm constantly checking for my wallet. I'm constantly checking my pockets to make sure I have it. I do it every five or 10 minutes, just a natural re uh, reaction. My phone, everything that I have with me, because I want to make sure nothing like that, because that, that can happen anywhere. When you're going through the, the metro you know, check-in in Paris, because that's when pickpockets work. Because when you're going in and out, you're paying attention about getting in or getting out of something, not where's my wallet, where's my stuff. And they know that, and fink, fink, you disappear. They've taken off with your wallet, and you're sitting at the station going, where's my stuff? So do be aware of that. Now, in terms of driving, and driving is a thing you can do here. Now, driving I don't tend to do when I'm abroad, but... Uh... France. Now, I will say that probably the dangerous part, the safety part of driving, is you have to realize the, the French like to drive very um, interestingly. Okay, so you really need to. Be that's, a, that's, that's a polite way of saying they don't know how to drive or they drive like a bunch of crazy maniacs. Be a defensive driver when you're here. So, if you're going to get a rental car, what I recommend, if you're going to be doing Paris as part of. Now, I've had some people, and I don't know if it's the same, but in, in the United States, most cars are automatic. Okay, they aren't like a standard, which is what we call stick shift. Now, I know how to drive stick, okay, but I saw a lady, uh, they did a YouTube video about them up in there, and they rented a car, and she demanded, you know, I don't want to have a, a stick shift, but they got a stick shift. Like, apparently, they have a lot of stick shifts up there, and I, I, I think one of the guys that was with her knew how to drive stick. I know how to drive stick, so I'm not worried about that, but a lot of people in America do not know how to drive stick. Of your French vacation, do not use a rental car in Paris. The parking and the driving, you're not ready. And that's the same in Chicago or New York City. Nobody, nobody wants to drive in the city. Uh, even way. Los Angeles is a different animal because Los Angeles uh, is a much wider area. The problem with Los Angeles, though, is the highways are packed. And so have you seen that movie where the guy driving the convertible in Los Angeles driving 80 miles an hour with his wind blowing in his hair, just driving on down the, down the highway? That, that, that doesn't exist, okay? It might exist on the PCH, the Pacific Coast Highway, but if you're driving from, look, I, there's, there's a place called Randy's Donuts, it's a famous donut place. It's not too far from where my cousin lives. And uh, you, you, you go, it, it's the, you know, uh, you've seen it with a big giant donut there. And it's probably about, if, for, if it was where I'm at right now, it'd probably about I don't know, a, a mile, a mile and a half. It'd probably take me about five minutes to get there. From his place, a mile and a half takes us 45 minutes because of the packed highway. Pay for it, okay? Just, just know that it's not worth it, the headache. What I would recommend is if you fly into Charles de Gaulle, or whatever. get your car in Charles de Gaulle, then go and drive around France. Because it's easy to drive around France. I'm not going to lie to you. We've done it a number of times. Yeah, driving around France is one thing, but driving around um, uh, Paris is another thing entirely. You know, if you rent your car in, at Charles de Gaulle, you maybe drive it to your hotel room, uh, hotel, and uh, park it there, and then take public transportation into Paris. But if you're going up, like I plan to go up to Normandy, then get in the car and drive up to Normandy, but just try and avoid going into the uh, middle of Paris. Times and loved it, but then when we come back to Paris, we drop off the car and then just use the metro and public transportation. Which is what I said. I say here it comes out there, but that's really in Paris itself. Or if you want to do Paris first, just go see Paris and then rent your car at the end of your Paris time and then go drive out and explore the country. Okay, because that's one thing you need to know. Um, also, if we start looking at accommodation. In general, just like everywhere in the world, you get what you pay for. In general, hotels in France, the rooms are smaller, so if you have limited mobility, that can. And I noticed that same in Germany because we got a we we had a uh, I don't know how which we, which we paid for the because my dad was only paid for it. Uh, it was it was essentially it was you walk in and it's like half a room and half a room, 
in the United States. Because if you walk into a United States hotel room, it's pretty spacious. Even the, the the motels, even the cheap ones, are fairly spacious. But it, it, it's very it, it's not, it wasn't a problem. I didn't have a problem with it. But it's it, it was one thing that I did notice is that the hotel rooms were very small, much smaller than they are in the United States. It can be a safety issue for you. So make sure you're asking your hotel if they have, you know, limited mobility rooms that they have available because one you have a lot of steps in some of these older places so and a lot of them are very steep so i've seen people fall down steps i have caught caleb falling down steps like cartwheeling down as a kid so you do need to be careful with the steps in some of these older hotels um also the elevators are a lot smaller so don't overpack the elevator and assuming they have them i always grab onto the um the railing and i'm going downstairs i've, I've actually done do that even in my own house and of the of the reason behind it it's it's just a force of habit that i now have and the reason i do it is because when i was i don't know uh about probably about 20 some odd years ago i went and i got my nephew who was in his crib i was babysitting him and he was upstairs sleeping but i heard him moving i went up and he was standing up so i picked him up and uh was going to go take him down to change his diapers as i'm walking down the stairs like i normally would you know just holding on to him uh, my sister's cat shot out and almost tripped me over and led um, i almost fell with him in my arm fall down the, fell down the stairs so i grabbed onto the railing and held held on tight and pulled myself up i wanted to i wanted to i didn't kill the cat but i wanted to after what cassidy the name of the cat just did and from now on from, from since then i've always uh, used the railing whenever i walk downstairs so there's a railing available that's what i'm going to do Elevators because you might get stuck in them and it's not like they're going to show up right away to get you out okay so be aware of that and be safe but in general you know the hotel accommodation safety stuff i found we haven't had any issue but i would say you know if they have a safe use your safe like you would anywhere in a hotel but with something to think about now another time when you might feel a little uncomfortable when you're in france is that you're going to an atm that's outside and sometimes there'll be a beggar really like right next to the when i were, i used to work for the bank don't use an ATM in a foreign land, okay? That's what I would recommend, okay? If you're going to withdraw cash or take cash out for any way, shape, or form, uh, you know, what, what I would do, he mentioned the safe. If there's a safe inside the hotel room. If I have like 200 euros or whatever it is, I'm maybe going to, you know, depending on where I'm going, I maybe take, you know, leave 160 in there, leave. Because ATM, not only are you paying the fee at the ATM machine in uh, the foreign land in France, you're also paying a fee in the United States as well for a lot of banks. They'll charge you. So if you're pulling out, you know, 40 euros, you might, it might charge you $10 just to pull out 40. And like I said, I, I, I y y he's talking about beggars. Yeah. Don't, 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 you know, don't use, uh, uh, uh don't give it any money to the beggars. Just, you know, sorry. In fact, Probably go to a different ATM if you desperately need to go to an ATM. The ATM waiting to offer you, and I, you know, well, not offer you, but ask you for money. That can be uncomfortable. Sometimes you want to go into a bank to do that, or just in general take your money and walk away. Um, just know that the a lot of places in France, the beggars, it's not just it's not somebody that's doing bad. It's just it, it's a gang of beggars that are doing these things. So don't feel bad if you don't give to the beggars that are here. And that's the thing. I think with the beggars, watch out for groups of children and groups of begging children because there's numerous stories of people having kids. Because the other thing I could think of is I could say, oh, I'll give you five euros. Memory serves. I, I think France still used the Euro, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, but if you use five euros, you know, or, or 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 give them some 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 of your, you know, I wouldn't mind giving some of my change, but you know, then, then other kids, oh, he gave me money, so I can get some money too. So surround them, and then when they're gone, their money belt's gone. Like, how do they get the money? Yeah, he's talking about the pickpockets doing stuff like that. Yeah, and th that's another thing. Okay, if you give it, then if that person gave you money, so we can all get money. Or another thing is they, you know, they'll surround you and try and pickpocket you. I'm aware of that as well. I'm like, sure, it was tucked in. What happened? They're magicians, okay? So be aware of that. And then, of course, you just have your usual safety precautions when you travel. Back up your documents. Have the numbers for your credit cards ready in case something gets lost. Notify your embassy when you're traveling. I mean, these are, you know, don't leave stuff in your car. I mean, these are everyday normal things that we do anywhere in the world. But you need to do that here, too, because a lot of people, France is their dream country to go to, as well it should. It's fantastic. But we go on vacation and we imagine the magic fanny pack is on us and nothing bad will happen and most likely nothing bad will happen 
but it's always good to be prepared and not be blinded. Be like, nope, nothing will go wrong. Nothing will go wrong. It's just good to be prepared. So I hope this helps you not be worried about going to France. It's a fantastic place. I come here again and again and again with my family. No problems whatsoever. But I just want people to know, here's some of the safety issues you might want to think about when you do come here. Anyway, I wish you all the best. I'll say bye from here in Strasbourg. Oh. Oh, and I want to say a special thank you to all our patrons on Patreon and our members on YouTube who help make honest travel videos like this possible. Thanks, y'all. Yeah, please click like, share, and subscribe for uh, Walter's World and like, share, and subscribe for me. He does great videos like that, and I want to do this because I'm going to be going to, uh, hopefully next year, going to France and enjoying it. And it's a lot of the same precautions that he's talking about. I was wary of when I went to Germany, and I think a lot of these would apply there as well, most of Europe. But yeah, please be safe if you do travel. If you're in France... I know, you, you know, I'm sure you're going to be wonderful people. I'm sure you're going to be wonderful hosts. And I can't wait to see see some of you out there. But thanks for watching. Please click like, share, and subscribe for him. And please click like, share, and subscribe for me. Have a good rest of your day, and thanks for watching.